God bless you. The heavens are telling of God and his glory. God bless you. Come on in tonight. It's Wednesday night word. It's the Wednesday before Christmas. And we expect God to do something great. I'm Bishop Elton Amos, and I welcome you to Old Landmark Church of God in Christ, located in Fort Wayne, Indiana, or at 6303 South Anthony Boulevard. And this is our Wednesday night Bible study forum. And we certainly thank God for you for joining. We thank God for all of his people and for all of you who make Landmark your choice this week. As you come in, I want you to take a moment and greet somebody in the name of the Lord. Oh, what a wonderful God we serve. And share, let your friends, associates know that old landmark is on. And we're live on Facebook. We're live and we're prepared a word for you that should encourage every heart and every soul, every mind. And we ought to leave here feeling better than when we came. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. That's right, please share. Praise God, I'm sharing right now and I hope you're doing the same. Praise the name of our God. God bless you on the Webster. Merry Christmas to you, sir, and your lovely family, to uh, your family, my kid, and all the children. And may the Lord continue to bless you there in Minnesota and all the saints of God who will name the name of Jesus the Christ. Come on in, saints. We love you and we appreciate you. We believe God has something great for us tonight. Again, I ask that you share with all your groups, all your associates. Let them know that old landmark, Bishop Amos, is on. We're going to talk a little bit about Jesus. I'm sure you figured that one out, didn't you? Hallelujah. I'm going to do one more share, then I'm going to come on back to you. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Stacy. Glad to see you tonight. Hail the power. Hail the glory of God. We appreciate you tonight. We believe God has great things in store for us. Wednesday before Christmas. When you were a child, you were filled with anticipation and excitement because your favorite day of the year, second only to your birthday perhaps, was about to come. But I want you to know the whole host of heaven was excited about this day as well because they knew the Savior was soon to be born. They cried peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Glory to God in the highest. And we give God the glory. I wonder if you'll pray with me now, Lord Jesus, we thank you for each and every one of these who are with us tonight and those who shall uh, witness and see this service. We pray that your blessing be upon your people, that you will keep us and preserve us and let your will be done. Now come on in to our rooms and to our places of residence, wherever we are, that we are involving ourselves in this study and this worship. And we pray that your spirit will overflow and that your anointing will meet each and every one of us and let us be found better off because we're in the word on Wednesday. Oh God, we pray healing, blessing and disease be cured from among your people. In Jesus' name, we declare it and say, thank God and amen. Come on and put a praise right there in the atmosphere. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to you. Well, we thank God for each of you. Thank God, First Lady Amos being in the room. Say amen for our First Lady. Amen. 
Hallelujah. She says, God bless you if you didn't hear, but I'm sure you did. Amen. To all of the hosts of heaven and all of the hosts of the Lord who are here in the earth, we thank God and we honor you. Together, we are one great big family in God, loving God, serving God, honoring him for all the great things that he's done. Oh, Landmark, I want to say thank you for the wonderful celebration that you hosted on behalf of me in my 30th year as pastor, me and my wife celebrating 30 years of pastoral services to you in Fort Wayne and also three years of celebration as the uh, bishop, the prelate of jurisdiction uh, of Puerto Rico. So we appreciate all of you and your honorary and your gifts, your love tokens, your phone calls, your text messages and all the acts of kindness. Thank you, my dear friend and mentor, big brother and all that he'll let uh, me be to him and that he can be to me, Bishop Jerry Maynard. Thank you so much, Bishop, because you have blessed us so much in the fact that you took time to have expressions concerning my celebration. So we pray that your blessing be with us and that you will continue to keep us and to lead us and to guide us uh, as the Lord leads us and guide us in the truth. Uh, I look for leading and guiding from my mentors, from the bishops, from the fathers in my life. And I ask God to continue to let his will be done. So God bless you. I want you to give God some praise right there where you are. And come on now and greet somebody in the name of the Lord, somebody that is there uh, with you. You see them online in the room, or maybe you see them uh, sitting across the room. But greet somebody in Jesus' name. Sweet anointing in the sanctuary. certainly the Lord is here and we thank God for each of you his people and I see you have greeted one another I'm so glad amen for those of you maybe your first time with us amen if you first if it's your first time with us please just put a text first time first time let me know that you're visiting us for the first time at Old Landmark and that you're ready for the word we thank God for you amen we thank God for his blessings and all that he has done and is doing in the land and we're looking for the Lord to bless I want you to get your Bibles out tonight we know that this is the Christmas season and uh, we appreciate the fact that the Lord has let us live thus far through 2020. Well, let's stop right there. Give him a praise for that. We're still here. Hallelujah, we're still here. So many have gone on, but we're still here. And they didn't go because they were chief among sinners. They didn't go because they were worse than anybody else. They didn't go because it was the vengeance of God on their lives. Uh -uh, no, they left because there's a pandemic in the land. They left because there's a disease there and it is taking and consuming the human flesh, men at record numbers, uh, not, numbers not seen in the last hundred years. And so if you don't realize the enormity of the situation, I want you to know it is enormous. It is historic. It is yet deadly. And for that reason, Christmas should not be 
uh, in that large and fabulous manner that you usually have. I know people say, well, I'm gonna have my Christmas dinner and I'm inviting all my friends to come. Your friends should love you enough to stay home and wear a mask and say to you, you know what, uh, let's pray that we're here next year and we can do this again next year. Why? Because there's a pestilence in the land. The Bible never told the saints to say there was no pestilence, but we know there was a disease. And when disease comes, you have to respect what God is doing. And I've said to you before, I'm not telling God how to fix it. We don't have to tell God, move it, turn it, twist it, Lord. God already knows how to fix it. If he's chosen for a thing to be, and then it will be. Of course, he will hearken to the prayers and petitions of his people. So if you're going to petition God, petition him as one who has complete faith in him, and you know that there is nothing too hard for him, and that he is able to do the exceeding abundantly and bring things to pass that have not been seen or done before. Today, uh, as we enter into the season, and uh, it is, I uh, hopefully, a joyous season for all. I, I hope it's a joyous season for everyone that you can enjoy what God is doing and enjoy the blessings of God, that you can enjoy the peace of God, enjoy the anointing of God, and especially enjoy the beautiful season where we, the righteous, celebrate not just the holiday in America called Christmas and, and the calmness that comes this time of year, but we wanna celebrate Jesus the Christ, the only born of the Father the one who was born, the only begotten, who was born to save men from their sins. That's who we celebrate. So tonight, amen, we wanna talk a little bit more about Jesus. And not just that he was born, but some of the circumstances around his birth. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. I want you to get your Bibles and uh, I dropped my Bible. Uh, I don't mean dropped it as in put it down, it fell out of my lap, uh, however. I'm turning back to that spot that the Lord had given me. And uh, yes, if you will give me a moment, I believe we are just about there. Yes. Amen. Sustainment, you got your Bible? All right. Now, when uh, Jesus was born, he was born after the birth of his cousin, after the birth of John. John was a little bit over, older. But in the book of St. Luke, first chapter and verse 26, St. Luke 1 and 26. And uh, I'll give you time to get there, but we're going to continue because you can later pause me and get your Bible and then come back to it. I can't pause you, you can pause me. And yeah. 1 and 26, it says, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. 
That is the book of St. Luke, chapter one, verse 26 through 35. Out of this text, I want us to look in verse 33, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Of his kingdom there shall be no end. I thank the Lord for this text, and I thank the Lord for this reading, and for you, his people, who are listening to it tonight, because I think sometimes you don't realize how blessed you are, because you don't realize that we live in the kingdom of the blesser. We live in the kingdom of the one of whom it is written, of his kingdom, there shall be no end. And that is the statement that Satan since time immemorial has been trying to overturn. He's been trying to find a way to end the Lord's reign, to end the kingdom of the Lord. But our subject tonight is no end in sight. Amen. Say with me, no end in sight. No end in sight. I love this text because it not only affects those who were born of the household of Jacob and descendants, uh, blood descendants of David and come down through the same historical lineage that would make Mary and then thus Jesus their cousin by birth and would make him in their blood lineage. And even though many don't worship him, they will acknowledge you. Well, Jesus the Christ, he was a great prophet. He was a great teacher and he was my family. Uh, they're, they're glad to tell you that. Uh, why? Because Jesus is a wonderful name. He's well known throughout all parts, everywhere in the world. They know the name Jesus. The name Jesus stirs up joy for some and stirs up envy and hatred among others. People are jealous of his power, jealous of the fact that he gets a day in almost every country in the world, except perhaps the Muslim world. He gets a day to be celebrated, a period of time, and it has been mixed in. We know it's been plagiarized by the pagans and plagiarized by the world community of non-believers, and they mixed a, a fat white guy with a white beard and rosy cheeks and, and a red fur suit. He lives in the North Pole, and and uh, he is served by elves who make uh, toys for the kids all over the world. And then one night he you know, rides around in a sleigh drawn by reindeer delivering these gifts through chimneys that don't exist, but to every child. And of course, that is a fairy tale. That is a child's fantasy. That is uh, a wonder for the marketing world. Oh, but you know what, eventually Christmas ends. Mm -hmm. Eventually the season, season ends, Christmas sales end and the shopping frenzy ends and then people got to go back to their usual form of activity. In fact, uh, the markets would love to keep these activities going and they'll have a post Christmas sale and then a late sale, leftover sale, and have you getting ready for the spring sale and, and Valentine's sale and all the other sales and all this happens, but Christmas, oh, it starts it off. It starts off that big frenzy, but it ends, it ends. And as much joy as it brought you as a child, Christmas at the end and that Christmas kingdom end. After a while, all the candy cane decorations come down after a while all the bells stop ringing after a while the people have to stop dressing like they're living in a fairy tale world thinking they're an elf or thinking they're a, a santa claus and, and they have to change their clothes and go back to the doldrum of their life why because that season ended but thank god for jesus of his kingdom yeah. hmm, there shall be no end so whatever you get out of his kingdom Whatever blessings come by being in his kingdom, there's no end to the blessing. How can I tell you there's no end to the blessing? Because there's no end to the kingdom. Amen, somebody. Amen. Not only is there no end to the joy that occurs in the kingdom, there's some things that are there for you 
when you live in the kingdom of the Lord God Almighty. That's why the angels of the Lord could so rightly say peace on earth, because you have peace when you're in this kingdom. And there's goodwill towards men. Uh, goodwill is not the goodwill that lists, that exists out there in the stores today where people give away used stuff and give away resale stuff, things that they could no longer use. But our savior gives good gifts and new gifts and anointing gifts that shall never expire, never get old. You'll never want to give this away. There is goodwill towards men. Why? Because Jesus the Christ in his kingdom, he brings the gifts of joy, peace, love, happiness, meekness, temperance, and faith. He brings the gifts of the spirit. He not only brings those things to you, but he also brings healing and deliverance and, and everlasting joy. And then on top of that, what goes on top of your prize with a pretty bow, the promise of everlasting life. My, 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 my. Of his end, of the kingdom, there is never an end. So the kingdom of the Lord, we must understand what it is since it says his kingdom never ends. How do I get into this everlasting kingdom that came and that was prophesied by the angels? not just by any angel, Angel Gabriel. Mm -hmm. This angel was named. Sometimes people think the Bible is full of just uh, mysterious parables and sayings. And there was a certain man and, and there was a specific woman and there was a woman at the well. And we never get to know that name, but you know this angel by name. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. This angel announced himself. This angel shows up by name. And he is usually referred to as the messenger angel, the messenger angel. And this messenger angel comes and brings this message Hey, Mary, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. You're going to have a son. And Mary said, whoa, what? What kind of greeting is this for someone that I don't even know to rush in and come out of nowhere, rush into my abode and tell me that I'm blessed and I'm getting ready to have a child. And I know I haven't been with any man. I'm engaged, but I haven't been with anybody yet. And the angel says, you're going to have a child, and you're going to be so blessed and the fruit of your womb is blessed, and the whole world is going to be blessed because of your child. You know, the name Mary is one of the most uh, popular names in the world. In almost every nation, there is a Mary. Why? Because she is so honored. Because what an honor it was to be able to be the mother of the Savior of the world. Oh, what an honor it was that she would have this announcement mm -hmm. that you are blessed. We never find out why she's so blessed. We never understand the mind of God that she was chosen as a young woman, uh, an early teen, some suppose. We never really understand why the timing was that while she was already engaged uh, to be married, that uh, she would be chosen. But the word of God calls her a virgin. This word virgin not only refers to the fact that she was young and innocent and that she was to be married to a husband for the first time, but it also refers to the fact that she knew no man. You say, how do we know that to be true? Well, first of all, the angel said it, that she was blessed of the Lord uh, and that holy thing in her would be born of the Holy Ghost, but also because Mary herself testified it, she said, I don't know a man. I, I, I don't know men on that level. Now, come on, y'all. I don't know nobody like that. But the angel said, it's all right. You are so blessed because you are going to bring forth the savior of the world. Yeah. And he's going to be a blessing in Judah. He's going to be the blessing in Jacob. He is going to take the throne of his father, David. And he's going to sit on that throne forever. He's going to rule Israel forever. He will be not just king and ruler, but he will be a blessing to all because his kingdom is not limited to the nation of Israel. His kingdom is not limited to Jerusalem or Judea. His kingdom is not limited to Bethlehem. His kingdom will know no end. Oh, thank God for Jesus. No wonder politicians were upset when they got to report about who Jesus was. No wonder other nations trembled 
when they heard about a king whose kingdom would know no end. I, no wonder all the nations of the world trembled. And even today, many don't even want to hear you talk about Jesus because they don't need more revolutionaries in their nation. They don't need more people with this thought, this mindset that I serve another great leader. They may not call him king. They may call him president or premier, or they may call him the supreme leader. But they understand when you're number one, what that is. Even your uh, existing president, who has only a few days left, said, you know what? If I was in any other country, if it was any other time, I would be the king. That's what he said. I would be the king. I'm the president just because of this democracy thing. But really, I'm like a king. Oh, yeah, people want to be a king. But those kingdoms have limits. Those kingdoms have borders. Those kingdoms are restricted in their power. But look at the kingdom of our God. When he later would die on the cross, he would walk in. And as our presiding Bishop Chandler Owens used to say, he kicked the back door of hell in and preached the gospel to those who were incarcerated in hell and led hell out of hell. He led those who were condemned, uh, who had been waiting on his promise, but lacked the faith to believe. They now had a chance to believe Jesus was so powerful. He was not only the king of the earth and the king of Jerusalem, but after he died and was resurrected and Mary fell at his feet and wanted to worship him, he said, don't touch me yet. i got to present myself to the Father. Why? Because I got an extension to the kingdom. i got to go on up to heaven. Not only am I Lord of hell, I'm Lord of heaven as well, and I'm Lord of earth as well. Somebody give God a praise. There is no end. No end, no end to his kingdom. Now, if there's no end to the kingdom, and somewhere in the kingdom, there's healing. You know what? You're a citizen, and you have a right to what the kingdom has. Mm -hmm. Everyone in America, we've been told, will have an opportunity to receive the vaccine. And I know some of you all, I'm talking about the COVID-19 vaccine, some of you all are praying over it. Some of y'all not even praying. You just said, I'm not, no, uh, I'm not going to do it. Well, you, you may not do it, but I want you to know you're eligible. Yeah. You know why you're eligible? Because you're in the kingdom. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Every citizen, they, they didn't say you had to be a taxpaying citizen. I work in the prison system. Even the prisoners are going to be offered the opportunity to receive the vaccine. The first care, uh, first line of defense, the medical workers are uh, offered the vaccine, the majority will take it and, and there will be others who are offered it and politicians will be offered. But everybody in the kingdom has a right to this. That's what I'm trying to tell you. When you're in the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, this kingdom that has no end, if there's healing anywhere in the kingdom, you have access to that healing. If there's blessings anywhere in the kingdom, you have access to those blessings. If there is deliverance anywhere in the kingdom, yes. that's why it's so important to have testimony service sometime. I know you can't do it all the time because you want to be able to control the mic. You don't want a situation to arise such as we saw in the convocation of 2014 eh, where it just goes viral because somebody says something and it gets misunderstood or in intentionally misinterpreted by the world and the world tries to use it against you. Oh, but we still need to have testimony service. You still need to hear somebody say I was sick but he healed my body. I had cancer and he brought me deliverance. I was in pain and he took away the pain. Why? Because the moment you know there's pain relief in the kingdom, you go, what? In, in our kingdom, there's pain relief. There, there's healing in our kingdom. There's deliverance in our kingdom. And I'm a citizen of hope and I better get what is available to me. And I want you to know that everything in the kingdom, the Lord has available to you. You don't have to live beneath your privilege. What you need is available to you. You don't have to live without it. Why? Because the kingdom will never run out. There will never be an end to this kingdom. I know holidays are coming. Holiday dinners are coming. 
and look like when you go to those big dinners that we used to have and don't do it this year, but next year you may be able to do it again near the end of the year, have that big dinner and it looks like food just keeps coming. You're so full, you've had the ham, you've had the turkey, you've had the roast duck. I mean, you've had the chicken the way you like it. You've had the burgers and the everything you could think of. Look like every animal that walked has been on your table and it's, oh, what a day. And all of the food just kept coming and the pie and the puddings and, 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 and all of the festivities, the cranberry sauce, the dressing, oh my goodness. And, and then you rested and had music and fun and laughter. And then you went back for some more. Why? Because it seemed like there would be no end. And, and just when you thought all of the good stuff had already been taken, here comes somebody with a fresh sweet potato pie. Oh, no, no, no. I can't take them. Yes, you want. I can't take no more. Oh, you don't want no more. We got some more. Well, well, you know what? If you got it, I might as well eat it. It's just one day. I know I've broken all of my past and all my traditions, but I, I might as well eat it while it's here. And you eat that piece of pie and it's so good. And you may come in and you may just be munching on your pie and you walk in the room where the folk were that didn't get any sweet potato pie. You got sweet potato pie? Uh huh. Where'd you get that? They, they had some in the kitchen. I think it's about all gone. All gone? You can't have 40 people at your house and not at least have 40 slices of sweet potato pie. You, you, you're going to have me here in your kingdom and not have enough for me? And so when you go in the kitchen and you say, I, I heard y'all had sweet potato pie. Yeah, we got enough for everybody. Then you know what? If you got enough for everybody, <laughs> I would like some sweet potato pie too. Cut my piece, cut it thick, cut it thick. Y'all understand what that is? Cut me a thick piece of sweet potato pie because I love, so you know what? You got a right to ask for it because you saw somebody else with it and they were giving it away in the same kingdom in which you are eating and fest in festivity right now. You're feasting on that which is available to everybody. So why can't you have it? Why can't you go in there? Unless you're diabetic and you know you've already shot your, your dietary budget. Why can't you go in there and get what's in the kingdom available for you? I want you to know that in this kingdom of God, in the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one that Gabriel himself and angel by name who specifically said in this kingdom there shall be no end and if there's food in the kingdom you got a right to eat if there's healing in the kingdom you got a right to be healed if there's deliverance in the kingdom you got a right to have the same faith that those that were delivered had when they found their answer oh somebody tell the lord thank you thank you you know what? I'm not going to act like I don't want it. I want it. Mm -hmm. I won't pretend that I don't need it. I need it. Yes. And if it's available in the kingdom, I'll do whatever it takes to get it. I want you to know we're living in a land where there is a promise. The promise to Mary must be true because we know the very angel who gave her the promise. His name was Gabriel. His name was Gabriel. Gabriel came by name and said to Mary, and it was recorded because somebody heard it, somebody witnessed what Gabriel said and documented that the angel Gabriel said that his kingdom would have no end. So Satan, you can't destroy this. Satan, you can't block it. Satan, you can't stop me. Why? Because I'm in the Lord's kingdom. And Jesus gave us many, many examples of the kingdom of heaven, of the kingdom of heaven. And he said, all you have to do is be willing to stay in it and, and uh, do your work in it. <laughs> Put some time in it. Put some prayer in it. Yeah. Trust in the God who provides all that you need in the kingdom. Trust in the God that gives you everything you need in the kingdom. Trust in the God that blesses you in the kingdom. And of this kingdom, there shall be 
no end. Somebody put a praise right there. Yeah. I'm glad there's no end. Why? Because we're celebrating in a season where we need some promise. We need some joy. We've had so much sadness, so much pain, so much disappointment. It'd be good to have a season of joy, wouldn't it? And I'm not just talking about kids opening toys. I'm not just talking about people wrapping and unwrapping presents, but I'm talking about the joy of the Lord that comes because you know who you are and where you are. You know that you're a child of the King and that you're in the presence of the Lord and everything you need, the Lord has for you. The Lord is here because we're alive in his presence. We're in the sanctuary. I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna ask God's blessing to come upon you this season that you might have the desires of your heart, that all the promises of the Lord that applied in your life are yours, that all the gifts of God are yours, that all the anointing of God are yours. He's here right now because you're in his kingdom. Father, in Jesus' name, we know you came to heal. We know you came to bless. We know you came to set free. So Lord, we look to you now, author and finisher of our faith. Thank you for accepting us into your kingdom. And in this day where there's so much sadness, let the ray of hope, let a ray of sunshine, let a ray of faith and belief enter into the hearts of your people. Let them know that you are the answer and you're not on a long distance journey. You're here right now, hallelujah. You're here to bless your people. You're here to meet all of their need. And there's nothing too hard for you. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. Now let your blessing come upon us as we continue in this week's of festivity, celebrating your holy birth, celebrating the change that came to the earth that was announced by Gabriel. And we delight in knowing that we are in your kingdom. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for including us. And we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, we say thank God and amen. God bless you. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. I pray that you have been blessed through the word of God, through the reading, and through his testimony. And I pray that you have received something today. I want you to remember in this season, we're gonna to continue to honor the Lord. We'll continue to lift him up and to bless him. Oh, Landmark will be back Sunday morning at 12 o'clock noon, Sunday at noon for our Christmas worship service as well. The post Christmas service and Sunday night at 6 p.m. But tonight I ask you to give a gift to the work of the Lord. Amen, make a presentation unto the Lord so that the Lord can be honored through your gift. Amen. As you give, give as unto the Lord. Whatever it is, if it's your tithe at this time, give your tithe. If it's your offering, give your offering. But most of all, don't let your giving be only to the vanity of this world. Give to bless the church. Give to help the kingdom and that the work of the Lord will continue. In the name of Jesus, we declare it and believe it and say thank God and amen. You know how to do it. Please give to www.givelify.com or you may and look for Old Landmark Kojic. There's several other Old Landmarks, but look for Old Landmark C-O-G-I-C, Church of God in Christ. Or you may give by way of the Cash App, and it's a little simpler, just the dollar sign, Old Landmark. Dollar sign, Old Landmark. Amen, and your gift will be received and be a blessing to the ministry in the kingdom. God bless you, and of course, if any of you wanna bless Bishop Amos, amen, during this Christmas season, Amen. You may certainly do that at the cash tag, dollar sign, Bishop Amos. Just Bishop Amos, B-I-S-H-O-P-A-M-O-S. And I will be grateful and thankful for whatever you have to offer church and family and friends. But most of all, let's continue to serve the Lord. Let's stay in the kingdom that has no end. And we will continue to be blessed, delivered, healed, and set free. God bless you. 
Enjoy this season, and we'll look to see you on Sunday at 12 noon, the Lord be willing. Thank you, Facebook. Thank you, friends.